Hello, loves! I am Hilary Rushford of Dean Street Society. If this is our first time hanging out, I am a personal fashion stylist and a mentor to fellow entrepreneurs, and I am super passionate about helping folks like yourself have more joy and less overwhelm in your style, business, and life. And today is a super exciting class for three reasons. One, it is the five-year anniversary of Dean Street Society this week. Five years ago today, I was working a miserable, soul-sucking job, collecting unemployment, and the reason that this anniversary is exciting for you guys is because we are gonna spend all month celebrating with a bevy of free classes and videos and workshops coming your way. Second of all, I just got back like five seconds ago, okay, two days ago, but just fresh off the boat slash plane from a four month sabbatical. It was an incredible experience and I have so many lessons that I cannot wait to teach and share with you. We're gonna start off with them today and they're gonna continue, I'm quite confident, for weeks and months and years because I know there will be more that I will realize in hindsight I learned, but I have, su I have stuff that I'm so excited to share with you guys right away that I've been writing and journaling and thinking about you guys over the last few months that I wanna start with. And the third reason today is so exciting is because it is the debut episode of the new Dean Street Society podcast. So this is something our community has been asking for for a long time, and we are doing this in two formats. So I'm gonna be doing these live on video. You might be tuning in right now here live on Periscope. Future episodes may be over on Facebook Live, and then we'll also be exporting the audio into a podcast. So whichever format you prefer taking content in, I wanna give you that. And if you're able to catch us live, that's awesome. And you guys can um, interact and comment with one another and ask questions. And if you aren't able to catch us live, you can tune in at your own leisure later on. Okay, I'm gonna pause for the editor for just a second here and say hello to everyone on the comments. Hi. Hi, podcasts are your jam, Liza. Um, Deanna, I'm so excited that you are excited that we are repurposing it in this way. Hi, Miss Kristen. Hi, Anne. Um, oh, by the way, Anne, I was going to message you to tell you that Kristen is also obsessed with Bachelor in Paradise. I feel like we need like a trio chat happening tomorrow night. Um, hello from Canada. So awesome to see you guys. Thank you so much for welcoming me back. So I'm going to dive into the class content today really want to power through this and then I'm going to stick around a little bit at the end to answer questions. So please, oh, I'm so glad that you loved my snap, Z. I felt like I was on sabbatical with you thanks to snap. I'm so glad, Zoe. I, I absolutely have loved Snapchat this summer. So um, you guys are obsessed. I love it. So I'm going to dive into the content. I'll stick around to answer Q&A. If you have a question along the way and I'm not going to see it, uh, write it down and come leave it over on Instagram. That's where I'm going to be curating questions over the coming weeks to be able to make sure that I get to everything you guys have questions for as I create new content for you guys each week. All right. So to kick it off today, I wanted to talk about lessons from sabbatical part one. Part one, because as I said, there will be many different lessons to come, and so this is just the tip of the iceberg, but it was really important to me today to start with empowering you around the concept of sabbatical, because what I don't want to see happen in my returning is people feeling like, oh man, I wish I was Hillary. I wish I could go on sabbatical. I don't have the money. My husband isn't able to take off of work. We have kids in school. I'm not at that place in my business. I'm not a business owner. I have a normal job and I'm just tuning into this. So it was really important to me that I start off these conversations around sabbatical by framing them and empowering you guys with what shifts we can all make right now to embrace various aspects of the sabbatical right where you are in your living room without having to use your passport. And part of the reason that's important to me is because I'm right there with you. I'm back from sabbatical now and I don't want to spend the next uh, quarter or year of my life thinking back wistfully in the past to like, oh man, when sabbatical, when I was on sabbatical, that was just the life. I want to take the lessons that I've learned there and begin to shift my present life so that, yes, I can continue to travel and I can have more sabbaticals in the future, but I'm also very happy in my present life. I'm not waiting for the, for the future and I'm not living in the past. So that's exactly where I'm at with you guys right now. And I've got four specific action steps that we can all think about to embrace this concept of sabbatical. And then I'm going to be back with a second class on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern over on Facebook Live, so 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and we'll continue this conversation. So the first 
first step I want to talk about today is the concept of seasons. And step one is to declare a season. Because really what a sabbatical is, is a season. It's a period of time when you think, oh, I'm going to be in this different place. I'm going to be in the, this different mindset. I'm not going to have to do these things. I am going to be doing these things. And the concept of seasons first came up for me years ago. I was headed to London for Christmas and I ended up on a series of plane flights that I realized when I looked back over a few months had created really natural seasons that felt very healthy and freeing to me. So I got on a plane and I went to London. I had six weeks there over the holidays and it was Christmas. So I was, you know, going to museums and going to shows and doing things with my family. And that was the priority more so for that season. Then I got on a plane, came back to the States and I was launching my first e-course, Style and Stylability. I was filming videos and writing content. I was speaking at an event later that month. So I just put my head down and I was powering through work. Then I got back on a plane to England. I was house sitting for a friend for three weeks who had um, so sweetly offered me their flat and I went into a different season of work just like no makeup in my pajamas just like writing organizing things like that got on a plane back to the US and went into a season of prioritizing my friends and play and social life more because I realized that I'd spent so much time away and so much time working that it was time for another season so that helped me to see in hindsight how healthy it was that I had a different energy in each one of those seasons. And really what a season is, is simply a time that we shift our focus and say, I'm prioritizing this. And I, I have permission in some ways, whether it's permission to not feel guilty um, or permission to focus on this, permission to not focus on something else. And so I like to look at these seasons. To me, it is more than a vacation or a holiday and less than a year. So, you know, if you're going to go on, um, or I shouldn't say, a, sorry, not just a vacation or holiday, it's less than a sprint or a vacation slash holiday. So a sprint is maybe you are and writing the end of your PhD dissertation or you are launching a new product and you just like put your head down for a week or two and you just really dive in. Or maybe you're on holiday, you take two weeks off over Christmas to go be with your family. I think a week or two, to me, that isn't a season. There isn't enough time to really sink into something. And then a year, a season to me is less than a year. Less than a year, because a year is just like, whew, that's a long time to have to focus on something. So another uh, reason, another example of how I realized the power of seasons is one of my mastermind sisters, about a year or two ago, she was writing a book. And she was really feeling weighted down by the fact that she, she was doing her hot seat in our retreat and she kept talking about like the year of the book. She was like, I, you could tell she didn't feel excited about it. She felt weighted down by the year of the book. And it was making her feel like she wasn't gonna be able to focus on any other creative pursuits or any other business elements. It was just kind of like she was resigned to the year of the book. And I said, what if instead of thinking about the year of the book, you break it down into smaller seasons? Because you're not gonna be doing this book for the next 365 days. There's going to be a season when you're looking for a publicist and, or a, a publisher and an agent. Then you're gonna get that and then there's gonna be a little lull before the season of writing a book. Then you're gonna pass it off to the, ed the editor. There's gonna be a, se a lull while you wait to get it back for the season of final uh, edits. Then there's gonna be a lull when it's actually being printed and now you have a season of the book tour and publicizing it. And that made such an energetic difference to her, realizing it wasn't that her priority all year had to be the book. She didn't have permission to do anything other than the book. In actuality, there were seasons where she was gonna prioritize the book and have permission to really focus on that. But then in between, there was going to be naturally other seasons. And that's why I think the concept, I personally am a little reticent to declarations around um, you know, New Year's, about like, what is your year gonna be like? I'm like, oh, a whole year? Like, I don't know. I don't know what I wanna commit to for the year. What if like I'm a different person in six months? What if things change? So to me, it's really powerful to give it enough time and I would say that's like six weeks to three or four months. You're giving it enough time to sink in, but also a short enough time to then have permission to change and move on to the next thing. And so for me, sabbatical really was merely a season. It was a season where we didn't have a big launch. Um, I wasn't running the day-to-day -day of my company. 
Um, we were really focusing on getting organized behind the scenes. Um, so it was a season of those things which I could have done if I just stayed put in Brooklyn. It did not require me to be off in Europe or to get on a plane or to use my passport in order to make it a season of those things. Conversely, I also could have had a season of travel while working. Just because I was traveling didn't mean that I wasn't working. So you could also say, I'm going to have a season of travel where uh, you know, if you're able to work remotely, I'm going to work the first half of the day and play the second half of the day. I'm going to work for four days a week and we're going to take three day weekends to really enjoy, you know, and nights to really enjoy the city that we are in. Um, so I would encourage you as the first action step for this first point to join me in thinking about your next six weeks to three or four months and consider what is the season that you want to be in. What is it that you want to prioritize and you want to be in a space where you have feel permission, whether that's permission to not focus on other things or permission to focus on things. D declare those below if you think about them as we go along, but there's a good chance that you may need some, you know, if you're watching live, but there's a good chance you may need some more time to think about this. So come over to Instagram at Hillary Rushford. That's a great space to hold yourself accountable. If you really want to be like, I'm going to sit down and have some tea tomorrow. I'm going to think through this and then I'm going to go over to Hillary's Instagram and just have a record that like I had some place to kind of declare it. So step two along those lines of declaring, is to if I like to say if you don't have a plane to board then get everyone around you on board so that story of my going to London a few years ago man there is something about getting on a plane that is so powerful you can have a list a mile long and it totally happened when I went in sabbatical there was so many things I was gonna get to and then we just ran out of time like plum ran out of time and all of a sudden the flights leaving you're like well am I gonna miss my flight to knock off these few things or am I gonna be like well I'm just I'm heading on the plane, so I guess I either am okay that it doesn't get done, I'll delegate it, I'll, you know, simplify it along the way. So there's something very powerful, and it is one of the reasons actually that I love travel and why I'm a fan of, you know, even if you can work remotely or however it is that it works for you, I find travel so powerful because it is that hard deadline. You can't procrastinate, unless you're someone who misses flights, which thankfully I've only done one, once in my life. Um, you're, you can't procrastinate. You're getting on the flight. It's leaving. So you're to, you did what you're going to do and you got to let your to-do list go. So if you don't have that plane to board, I think the really powerful thing to do is to get everyone around you on board. And if this is going to be your season where you are focusing more on nurture and rest and self-care for yourself, you tell your husband, your girlfriend, your mom, your team, your best friends, whoever it is, so that people know. Um, I, I'm going out to dinner with um, friends later tonight, and I was just thinking one of them had had a foot injury when I left, and because I, because she brought me on board of that, I was aware she had a foot injury. I would shift accordingly. I wouldn't invite. I wouldn't ask her to walk all the way down to our apartment. I would offer to go to her because she brought me on board. And so I realized tonight as we were texting, I was thinking oh, I should go down by her. And she said like, oh, I can bike to you. And I thought, oh, she's in a season of having a healthy foot now. She's no longer in a season of having an injured foot. But as her friend, because she brought me into that, it allowed me to be sensitive and not ask her if she wanted to go on a walk around the park to hang out because I knew she couldn't walk. So when we bring people on board, it really does allow the people around you to love you and support you and nurture you and provide that energetic accountability that getting on a plane can. And also, to be honest, that's what we're creating here within Dean Street Society. Um, if you are tuning into this live, we are in the midst of rolling out a bunch of different classes and some challenges coming up and different things that you can go along and kind of hold yourself accountable in this community um, if you don't have that plane to board. Okay, number three is think about yes. Think about what you're going to say yes to that is going to support this season and that is perhaps what you're going to fill those people uh, around you, get them on board with. So I think this is a really important distinction that we focus on what we're saying yes to and not what we're going to say no to. Let's take the example of your closet. I'm a fashion stylist, as you can see with my garment rack behind me. So if I told you, let's say you had 30 dresses and I said to you, you have to get rid of five. 
it would take you so long to hem and haw over like, do I get rid of this one? Or, you know, I don't know, but I might, but this one was expensive, but maybe if I just lose five pounds, you're back and forth. But if I said to you instead, hey, we, you like, you got a speaking gig, let's throw some stuff in a bag, I'll pick your five favorite dresses. That would be way easier. I guarantee you, you have more clarity on the five dresses you wanna say yes to, the five things you love, the five things that light you up, much more quickly than you can the five things that you want to say no to that maybe have stories attached and you spent money and all these different sorts of things. So what I realized about two months into sabbatical was there were things that I continued to wish that I was doing, that I continued to wish I was saying yes to. Uh, meditation, yoga, working on my French writing. That was kind of my list of four. But when I sat down to think like, why am I not doing those? there wasn't really anything to say no to. What I was saying yes to was all good things that I didn't want to have to give up. I was wandering around new cities, I was going in the ocean, I was going to museums, I was going vintage shopping, you know, I was reading books, I was relaxing in the park, all good things. And so if I looked at it as you've got to say no to something, that would have been so hard and I guarantee you I would have made less progress. But instead, I asked myself, what do I want to say yes to these four things? Okay, I'm just going to start considering saying yes to these more often. And another example of this I love is my friend Jen was really trying to lose weight after uh, giving birth to her baby. And it wasn't happening, it wasn't happening. She couldn't you know, find time to exercise and things like that. And she just decided to say, I am going to say yes the first hour of my day to working out. And therefore, she didn't have to decide, what am I going to say no to? What, what am I going to give up in that extra hour? Because that stuff is going to work itself out. By the end of the week, if you haven't finished something, you're going to realize what you need to say no to is that next collaboration offer you got. Or, you know, if it's 4 o'clock and you got to be out by 5 o'clock, you're going to say no to perfectionism because you're just going to get that email out the door. But by saying yes, first and foremost, to what she was craving the most, the season that she wanted to be in, which was a season where she focused more on her health and wellness in the midst of being a busy work, uh, busy working mom. Excuse me. So the other thing I want to uh, point out about these yeses is you are going to have a tendency to want to say yes to multiple things. And I you're not alone that you're going to need to limit your yeses. I had that initial list of four things. This was like maybe um, two months into sabbatical. And at the end of that month, I realized that I, I wasn't doing them. I had just been thinking about them. And so I thought, okay, I need to be even more intentional about my yes. So then I started to like kind of kick it up into gear. And I was like, I'm gonna do these things every single day. And then I realized that was just unrealistic. You add in meditation and yoga and French and writing, suddenly you're talking multiple hours in a day. Well, of course there was, it wasn't feeling like there was time for all of that. So I both had to choose slash just kind of see what happened organically of which of the yeses did I want to or most naturally say yes to. So the one for me was meditation. I have an app called Headspace that I highly recommend. Um, and I just got into the habit of pressing play, you know, um, right when I woke up in the morning while I was still lying in bed, pressing play on this 10 minute meditation. And that for me was the first yes of the day. It allowed me to be like, okay, check mark. I did something that I wanted to in this area. It was just 10 minutes. It was really easy to knock out. The only thing I was fighting against was like laziness of like, I don't, I don't know. Do I want to sleep more or, you know, do I want to, sit and read the news like something silly and so there is going to be a reality that you will likely have to limit your yeses because something that I realized this summer and why I think that seasons is so important is because myself and almost all of Dean Street Society we are very multi-passionate people that's why you don't want to have the year of the book that sounds so boring there's so many other things you want to do it's just the year of the book um, but on the other hand if you just pick a different thing all 52 weeks of the year and nothing has a season you're gonna have a very shallow life. You're gonna have like a shallow marriage, a shallow relationship with your kids. You're not going deep on anything. So I think this concept of seasons allows us to dabble in a variety of things. Um, the declaring of it, getting everyone on board keeps us accountable. And then the yeses, again, there's going to be more things that we wanna say yes to. And so knowing, okay, right now, 
I'm just saying yes to meditation and then I'm going to add in a few of these other things. But you know what? I can keep saying yes to them. I can, for right now, I've decided I'm not saying yes to French. I came back. We have a lot going on this month in the business. So I gave myself permission to not say yes to French right now and to move that off my list while it remains a desire of mine, you know, next month, for example, to get back in. All right. So the fourth and final step here is really an energy of ease. And I think that is what I was so attracted to by sabbatical. And I think it's what other people are attracted to. If you are following along on Instagram and Snapchat, and if you're saying, man, I wish that I could have this as well, I would garner to say the main energy that people are resonating with and desiring is an energy of ease. And so with looking at all of these things, I find also that it is easier, that it is more productive to come at it with an energy of energetically here's what my season is energetically here's how i'd like support from my family energetically here's what i'm going to say yes to now that may or may not work for you for me i'm very aware of my myers-briggs type uh, in my signature course elegant excellence we go a lot deeper in that thanks to miss Kristen j bates one of my dear friends who is a myers-briggs genius she really helped me understand my personality type and how to shift my business and my life around that so for me i am a p on myers-briggs versus a J, which means I really like spaciousness versus structure. So for me, if I come up with these four things I want to say yes to every day, and then I'm like, okay, you've got to do that like from, you know, eight to nine AM, you're everything gets fifteen minutes, like you gotta make it happen. That that doesn't feel like a happy, good way for me to start my day. And I think that the dream we have about sabbatical is for most of us, we're not gonna have a schedule. Got, got nothing to do, going to chill, going to hang out, lots of white space. And because I'm so passionate that we not wait, we not dream of this concept of sabbatical and say, if only I could go on a sabbatical, then I would have this white space. But it's that beautiful intersection between intentionality and ease that you are declaring this season, getting people on board, thinking about your yes. And yet there is an energy of ease about it that you aren't like, okay, I'm going to feel peaceful this month. Gosh, darn it. I'm going to schedule that piece and I'm going to get it in there. Like obviously those two things are counterintuitive, but so is saying, I'm just going to buckle down and hustle right now. And I'm going to save up money. And in two years, I'm going to go on a sabbatical and then I'm going to feel a sense of ease. I am so passionate. It is one of my deep core beliefs that we need to live lives with more, more ease, more white space. My tagline for the course Elegant Excellence I just mentioned is the rare business path of less hustle and more grace. And that really is what sabbatical is about to me and why I wanted to lay this foundation today to start to just really encourage you as we continue to talk about sabbatical in the coming weeks and in the coming classes that I, along with you, have elements that we can sink into right now without having to wait. Um, there's a, a quote by Diane von Furstenberg where she says something to the effect of, I became the woman I wanted to be. And years ago that struck me as such a powerful quote, and I'll share this in closing, that you know, she said that when she was much later in life, but I realized I don't want to live a life where I am waiting until I'm in my 40s, 50s, 60s, and then feel like, okay, now I've arrived. So it hit me a few years ago, like, I really am the, the woman I wanted to become. Like, I'm running my own business. It's financially profitable. It makes me feel creative. I'm getting to teach. I'm getting to curate community. I'm getting to travel. I live in a neighborhood and a home that I love. Life is far from perfect. Running a business is so hard and so challenging. There are so many more tears in entrepreneurship than I knew. And yet, I don't want to hold my breath for the next three to five years and be like, in a few years, then I will be at this magical place of having achieved it. So my real message for today as we continue on in this sabbatical series is for you to join me in the choice to stop waiting and to find ways to take intentional action now to have that life of more white space, of less hustle and more grace, to experience healing or joy or pleasure or adventure or creativity, whatever that is, whether you're a fellow entrepreneur or not, these things apply all across the board for all, all men, all women. Um, and that you would join me in that, join me in that 
in this season. So coming up next, join me on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Facebook Live. I'm going to share with you the hardest lesson that I discovered throughout sabbatical. And again, I'm going to give you action tips about how you can apply it right now. This series is not about, while we can totally cover things like travel tips and all of those sorts of elements of how to actually go on a sabbatical, which I would love for everyone to be able to do, what's really important to me first and foremost is that without anyone getting on a plane in the next three months, we can all experience the benefits of that sabbatical now. All right, so I'm going to have the editor cut. And for those of you that are here live, Marilyn Taylor, you are super excited. I am super excited to be able to read your guys' comments and answer some questions. Thank you guys so much for being patient while I powered through that. I really just want to be respectful of everyone's time. And I know people can't always stick around for a long time. So I'd rather get the content out. Oh, thanks, Hungry Digital. You actually missed the announcement in the beginning. This is the very first episode of the Dean Street Society podcast. Podcast. And by the way, for those of you listening here, we will um, we will not be launching the podcast right away. So to try to tune in when you can to these ones live, we will be exporting audio a little bit down the road and launching that out as a podcast. But just we will absolutely let you know via our email list, which you can hop on at deanstreetsociety.com. Um, we'll let you know when the podcast is there and when you can start tuning in that way instead. Um, hmm. All right, someone asked where I went on sabbatical. Um, yes, Europe, France, Croatia, a few other places. You're exactly right. Uh, we ended up mostly in France. Um, I actually left on sabbatical um, planning to be there for six weeks. I'll tell this longer story at another time, but I um, basically realized I didn't want to come home. and We just didn't get on the plane, and we just kind of played it from ear by then. We didn't really know where else we were headed to, um, and we, uh, Bo and I just kind of checked in with each other, other every once in a while, like, all right, where, uh, where do you want to go next? So we ended up spending a lot of time um, in France because we were both working on our French, and that ended up being super excited, uh, exciting. Oh, I'm so glad that much of my trip inspired yours, Marilyn. That's awesome. Um, so someone else asked what inspired the sabbatical. That's really um, a lot of this broader conversation that we're going to be having. Um, entrepreneurship, my experience, was exhausting. And it is very much my desire that it does not have to be exhausting for everyone. Um, and that I want to find ways to make it better. Uh, make, I want to find ways for other people to be able to achieve what I've achieved and beyond, which was having going from unemployment to over a million dollars in revenue in four years, being able to take a four-month sabbatical, and yet in the midst of that, it has been an exhausting, excruciating five years. It continues to be a challenge, and so I'm really committed to finding ways to make it more sustainable for myself and then teach others so that others can get to that place faster and easier than I did. So that was what prompted the sabbatical was really realizing I needed an extended period of time of rest and reflection and really just of healing uh, that going and, and lying on a beach for a week wasn't going to cut it. Um, I love how you describe your work. I'm running my own business. I get to be creative and teach. Absolutely. Was it hard not to work? No. <laughs> uh, I do think it would have been hard. Bo and I talked about this. If I decided to completely go offline, like no Instagram, no Snapchat, I think that would have been hard. I think that would have made me feel more like I was kind of disappearing on my audience and almost like what if people not forgot about me, but if there was kind of like that dip of momentum to come back into, I think because I was staying engaged in the community there and really sharing the journey, um, it still I still kind of had that creative outlet, but that had its pros and cons because there was also times when it, it's stressful. You're trying, you're trying to decide, should I be in the moment or should I be Snapchatting this? Um, and Bo and I talked about that a lot, different times when he was like, you know, I want you to be able to be present having this experience with me. And when you're on Snapchat, it feels like you aren't. Um, so we can talk about that at, at a later date as well. Um, but I feel like for me, that social media kind of let me keep a finger in it. Um, and actually, the more and more time went on, it felt very easy to not be working. I knew that it was a really um, right thing. Have you experienced people who are jealous of you and how do you handle that? Um, you know, R Rihanna, I, 
I, I wouldn't say that I hear that a lot, but I do think there was a lot of that energy around the sabbatical with things like people saying, I wish that I could do this. And that's why it was important to me to come back and start the conversation with a lot of really practical things about how we could energetically have those experiences right now, as well as how did we financially afford this? What happened with my company? All those more practical things we'll get to in the coming weeks. Um, but the way I handled that really was trying, I am handling that, is trying to pull back the curtain and give as much education as I can that if you felt jealous I had this experience, let me help you have as much of it as you can right now. Let me help you plan it for the future so you can have the exact experience um, rather than just saying, you know, yeah, make more money in your business and you can do it too. Um, but those are definitely your components of it. In the coming weeks, we're going to talk about revenue. We're going to talk about team. Um, those things that allowed me to go on the sabbatical um, and the, the challenges around that as well. Um, okay, other questions. Mm. Excuse me. And then I'm going to wrap up in just a few minutes here. And just as a reminder, in case you didn't get to write it down, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern over on Facebook Live, we'll be continuing this conversation with the hardest lessons that I learned during sabbatical. And again, how you can add them in right now. Oh, Rihanna, you're so sweet. Um, I've been dealing with a bit of that and always look up to your self-confidence. How do you differentiate between seasons you think you should have and what you really desire? what you think you should have and what you really desire. Carrie, I would say, not to sound super woo-woo, because I'm not really super woo-woo, but I have been leaning more into really trying to listen to what I actually want. Um, because I think that if you're not self-aware in that way and listening to and leaning into that, you're ultimately not gonna be happy. You're gonna feel resentful that you said yes or no to this or that. Um, and so I think what you really want is the most important thing to pay attention to. And so for example, if what you really want is a season of rest, but you also need to pay your bills and your company isn't at the point where you can take your time off, you can still focus on my priority is a season of rest while staying financially responsible instead of being like, well, I want to rest, but I have to work. I think you can come at it with that energy to say that you are prioritizing rest, whatever that means to you, whether it means you're taking weekends off, you're closing your computer at a certain time, you're starting your morning slow, you're taking a break in the middle of the afternoon, um, and yet you are still remaining responsible. And that's something you're gonna hear me talk about a lot um, in the coming weeks. I'm really passionate, if you're a fellow entrepreneur, that in order to have the freedom we all desire, we have to be financially secure. And so making money in your business is important. Um, obviously, I think probably most of my community is with me that like our number one goal is not to make a lot of money, but you also can't discount it and you can't feel guilty that it's a priority because it does allow for the freedom. I have had no money. I have been on unemployment um, for many years actually. And so I'm very aware of the stress level that comes from not being financially secure. And so it's very hard to live a peaceful white space life when there's that much stress in the back of your mind. So it is that balancing act, but I think it's having that season where you're like, I am saying yes to rest in the midst of focusing on growing money for my business in this um, you know, analogy, rather than saying, well, we gotta make money, so I just gotta be miserable and like be a martyr for the next few months. And that, that, those mental stories and that rewiring is very challenging and I actually have a, a 10 part video series that I've already recorded for you guys. It's totally free. That's going to be coming out really soon. Um, that's going to walk you through some of that. So um, if you are not already on our email list, if you didn't get an email about this or if someone shared this Periscope very sweetly and you are new, head over to DeanStreetSide.com pop your email in the coral uh, box on the sidebar there. We'll get you the recording of any of these classes that come out, as well as news of the next classes that are coming, as well as that free 10 day video series, et cetera, et cetera. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. It was so wonderful to hang out again. Hi, happy heart, kid. Um, amazing. Oh, greetings from Paris. Oh, that's, oh, you're normally a Brooklyn girl. I love that. All right, guys, I am so happy to be back as well. Thank you, Layered by Cake, for sharing this. I really hope that this is encouraging to you guys, and I want to just repeat one more time as I sign off here. 
choosing your season, getting everyone around you on board, thinking about what you want to say yes to, and coming at it with an energy of ease. Think on those things for the next few days. I will see you over on Facebook Live on Wednesday, and I would love for you to declare for all of us what is your season of the next six to six weeks to three to four months and what is it that you really want to say yes to more as well so i will see you guys then don't worry joyce and co i believe you can watch the replay right here on a periscope so you can tune in and i can't wait to see you guys again very soon thanks so much and i'll see y'all soon come over and leave me a comment on instagram if you had a question that i didn't get to and i will talk to you guys soon with grace and gumption Mwah.